scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Therefore, I declare, again standing upon the grace of our Father, everything that left you that should not have left, I don't care when it left, I stand by the God of heaven like the missing donkey I command it to return back to your destiny I command it to apparatus return to your destiny hallelujah there was a man in the Bible who owned a colt. And even though he bought it, he never rode on it. He did not even know why he bought it. He just tied it in a street where the roads divide. When it was time for a triumphant entry, he said, go to a street where the roads divide. You will find a colt that no man, including the owner, had ridden on. He said, lose it. And if they ask you, Say the master had need of it. There are people who are holding certain things about your destiny. Now you have need of it. You do not get into a triumphant entry walking. It is with honor you triumph. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, everyone who is holding what belongs to you, Maneke Paratash Kodeberata, between now and December, I come by the voice of prophecy. We compel that they release it. For your triumphant entry, we compel that they release it. Finances, relationships, jobs, I declare in the name of Jesus, release it now. Someone prophesy, release it, release it, release it, release it. Mabrakateke tobaratoshia. Someone prophesy, declare, release it in the name of Jesus. The master had need of it. This is part of the service we declare release it that ministry needs a triumphant released. entry let it be released that family needs a triumphant entry In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory.
I raised that song because I want to prophesy Psalm 3. It says, how many are they that surround me? Many are they that say, where is your help? That there is no help for you in God. But the psalmist said, thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me. It says, you are my glory and the lifter up of my head. Whatever has brought your head down in the name that is above all names, here at this conference be lifted. Here at this conference be lifted. Here at this conference be lifted. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Amplified says, Arise from the prostration and the depression that circumstances have kept you. He said, Rise to a new light. In the name that is above all names, for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that has been under circumstances that may seem to have defied your prayer, your fasting, in the name of Jesus, we come tonight by the rod of a higher priesthood. And by the name that is above all names, I declare, rise from the ashes. Rise from shame. Rise from pain. Rise from defeat. For indeed your light is come tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Give Jesus a big hand clap and please be seated. Hallelujah. We're still discussing along the lines. In fact, let me say this. Yesterday, I requested permission from our Father to allow you come with your prayer request. How many of us came with your prayer request? Wave it. Let the devil see it. Because that Egyptians you see, the Egyptians you see today, you will see no more forever. Now here's what I want you to do. Please listen very carefully. I will request that as I am teaching, can you pass your request to the last person either by your left or right? And then the ushers or the whatever department is responsible for this, may I request that you just walk around gently and then you collect it. If you are yet to write your request or your faith failed you and you didn't write everything, let me give you one minute. Please write again. Even those following online, by television, internet, here is your opportunity. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. But it says, in everything, by prayer and supplication. It says, let your request be made known. Don't assume, let your request be made known hallelujah so please let's do that quickly so that whilst i'm teaching the ushers they will be authorized people you will see them across when they come no one is reading your request so please be comfortable you will pass it around they will collate you and then somewhere in the course of this service i would request that we'll bring it and place it upon this altar hear me the power that will fight you and prevail after this conference is not yet in existence. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. Please make sure you write for your family, write for your children, write for your ministry, write for your business. Yesterday we began to look along the lines of the theme, activating the commanded blessing. We considered Psalm 133, exploring the power and the mystery of unity. We said how that, according to scripture, in the state of unity, there is a blessing that has been commanded. My apologies yesterday, I did not take the time to define for you what we call the commanded or a commanded blessing. We're going to start with that definition. So yesterday we considered the fact that in the state, more than a place of unity, the state of being in one accord, that there is a supernatural dimension of God's power that is released. And the Bible calls it life. And we said life there does not just mean the ability to breathe. It means the factor that keeps anything alive, keeps it 
consistent gives it longevity. Hallelujah. Today we are still looking at part two of the teaching. Activating the commanded blessing. We'll be looking at the power and the mystery of complete obedience. That the commanded blessing is activated at the place of obedience. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 23, please. Numbers chapter 23. We we'll begin our reading from 19 and 20. This reading would define for us Numbers chapter 23. 19 and 20. Yes, please. God is not a man. Hold on. Very powerful information. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. He tells you a weakness in all men. That it is a weakness in men to lie. They don't lie because they are bad. They can lie because they are men. A lie here does not necessarily mean deceit. A lie means the inability to bring what you say to pass. So you may be a person of integrity, but with respect to performance, you still can be a liar if what you say does not sustain the ability to come to pass. He said that God is not a man. Now he became a man, but he is not a man. Are we together? That means if God were a man by default, we have a right to doubt what he says because it means within him will still be that weakness in every man. The lie, meaning the inability to bring everything he says to pass. And he says, nor the son of man. That means there is no human paternity traced to him. The presence of a human in his life was a woman to only give him a physical frame. But no man played the fatherly role to bring him here. So we cannot necessarily call him the son of man that he should repent. He said, had he said, and shall he not do it? We're establishing what the commanded blessing means. Or had he not spoken, and shall he not make it good? That means even if God makes a mistake, and calls an animal prosperous, immediately that animal will have to change to be prosperous because God is not a lie. Anything that proceeds from him sustains within itself the power to make sure what he says does not lie. Verse 20. Behold, I have received commandment to bless. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on. By reason of this quality I just showed you about God, I have received commandment on his behalf to bless. And he had blessed. And I cannot. I have received commandment to bless. And I have blessed. And based on this quality of God I just described, you would have stopped me from speaking. But now that you did not stop me from speaking, I have said it. And because it's a sworn or commanded blessing, I cannot reverse it. Hallelujah. The blessing is commanded in the place of unity. But the blessing is also commanded in the state of of obedience now please look up the way that we study scripture from a theological standpoint is that every time God wants to bring forth a thought in the Bible there usually will be an individual who personifies God's idea as regards whatever issue you are discussing are we together so if God is talking about faith there usually will be an individual who personifies faith so that we are not left in the dark. That every time you are studying about God's value or God's kind of faith, you can make reference to that individual. This is also true for obedience. 
That is one of the reasons why God names himself after men. For instance, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. Is it in your Bible? The God of Jacob. I hope you know that the God of Abraham does not work like the God of Isaac. It is the same God, but the character of operation is not the same. Hmm. Are we together? Yes. So every time you face famine and destruction and you are at the verge of shame, you need to understand something about the God of Isaac. That Isaac can sow in a land. And he can obtain blessing by an operation of God that even in that same year he can reap. When you desire an encounter with God that can change your name, it is not the God of Isaac you meet. It is the God of Jacob. The Bible says, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Psalm 24. Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, that he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Then he says, this is the generation that seek you, and that it seeks you in the similitude of the God of Jacob. So if you want to seek God in a way that you find him, the Bible refers that you go and understudy Jacob. Now, we are going to study God's idea of obedience. Are we together? And there is a personality in scripture that is God's reference. That every time you want to understand God's idea of being an obedient believer to attract the commanded blessing, you will have to study that individual. Isaiah 51. Is God helping someone tonight? Isaiah 51 and we're reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 1. Yes, please. Hearken to me. Hearken to me. Ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord. Uh-huh. Look unto the rock whence ye are healed. Look unto the rock whence ye were healed. And to the hole of the pit whence ye are deep. I want us to read verse 2 together. If you are a Christian and you are here and you can see. Are you ready? One to read. Look unto Abraham your father. Stop. It says look unto Abraham your father. And to Sarah that bore you. For I called him alone. And did something to him. And he became blessed and increased. That means he was not born blessed. Study his life. What happened between me and him. That turned him from being alone. To being blessed and increased. Look unto Abraham. Just stop at verse 2. Your father. And to Sarah that bought you. For I called him alone. And blessed him. And increased him. So let's look unto Abraham very briefly as the Bible tells us. Are you ready? Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. We'll begin from verse 1. The first three verses, please. Verse 1. Mm. Now the Lord the had said, Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, uh -huh. Get thee out of thy country. Stop, please. The Bible very interestingly starts the journey of Abraham with a strange instruction. He comes to meet an idol worshiper who dwelt in awe of the Chaldeans. And I hope you know, theologically speaking, that Abraham was not the first person God spoke to. Read your Bible. God spoke to his father, Terah. But for some reason, Terah said, no, no, I'm not interested. And he said, I will respect you. Now, Abraham, let's try you and see. I want to swear a blessing upon you and will the earth as your estate. But here is the condition. He says, get thee out. Of thy country, number one. And from thy kindred, number two. From your father's house, number three. My question is, when you get out of these three realms, what is left? How could God meet a man? And instruction number one is to empty you from everything that is an anchor for your future and your destiny. 
I show you how the commanded blessing. There are men on earth, but we are not all the same. There are men who God has invested his jealousy upon them by reason of their sacrifice of complete obedience. It is this man that he suffers no man to do them wrong. He and even rebuke kings for their sake. Listen, please. Listen very carefully. Are we together? So he calls Abraham. Back to the scripture, please. The Lord told him, get thee out. It's like God coming to you and saying, leave your job. Leave your city. Leave the house you just built. Leave your real estate investment and just start moving. Go to where the name of the location is, follow me. I will explain later on. Let me tell you this. You know God is the one leading you because he never gives you the complete details. There must be faith and patience captured in your journey. If it is the God of Israel, no matter how accurate you are prophetically, when God starts with you, he will not give you all the details. Mm. I'm saying that because there are people right now who seem to be in the middle of nowhere and are saying, God, what is the name of what we are doing? I will soon give you the name. The Bible says, only follow them who, who obtain the promise through faith and patience. That means that is not the only way of obtaining. There is malpractice and many have obtained through it. That means if you study a man's spiritual journey and you don't find instances in his journey where he had to depend on God, and to allow the law of process run away. Watch this. So he told Abraham, 12 now. The first thing you see, watch this. Notice the character of God. He does not just tell you what you will benefit first. He brought the instruction and left it to him. If you will comply with this, then verse 2 now becomes yours. Most times we, join, we jump verse 1 and we rush to verse 2 and claim it and keep claiming and nothing happens. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and I will make your name great. This is powerful. You see, I wish I had the time I would have taught you what it means for your name to be great. Because if you are great and your name is not great, by the time you exit the scene, nobody can inherit your blessings. Your name is a cover for all who come through you so that they will, that relevance will remain. You can be great and your name is not great. There are products we buy today. We are not buying products, we are buying names. Because their names are great. He already said, I will bless you. But the goal is not just to stop with you. I will make your name great. This already is a message maybe to a father here sometime. Find out whether you are just becoming great or your name too is becoming great. Because at the end of your life, your name will be a key or a padlock. One of them. Your name will lock up another man's destiny. Or your name will be the key that opens another man's destiny. Even for God in heaven, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, not just a means of identification. Men can run into it and be saved. Listen very carefully. So he said, I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Verse 3, my God. And I will bless them that bless you. Do you know what it means to be an embodiment of the blessing? That if somebody wants to be blessed and his journey is slow, he quickly blesses you for his sake. That anybody who identifies with you as touching what I have made you, the effect will be rippled on him. And then I will curse him that curses you. Then he says, in thee, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. All the three religions on earth, it doesn't matter what happens between us. 
they all came out of that man. Whether it is Islam, Judaism, Christianity, he answers father to all. Are you learning now? The Bible says that at this strange instruction, Abraham got up. I can imagine Abraham packing his things. And the other people are saying, Abraham, where are you going? And he says, I wish I know. I only trust the person who spoke. Can I tell you, by the privilege of, our, of God's grace, our father is going to be celebrating 50 years in this work of the kingdom. And I understand this church is going to be 35 years. Let me tell you this. This is what I call the journey of faith and obedience. I am sure, respectfully speaking, that from the first day God called our father, he would know that there were things he would do, but he may not know how far. The journey is follow me, not follow it. God never calls you to follow it. Forget about ministry and business. Your first point of followership is him. When you follow it, you will miss your way. Many are following it. Money. Following it. A name. When he called the disciples, their destiny would be that they would become apostles. But he said, follow me. It will never make you. It is me who makes. Please, are you getting what we are dealing with now? Many believers... Although say they spend their life following it, hoping money will make them, hoping some position will make them. But the journey of the believer, when God calls you, he will never give you the details of everything. The journey is follow me and I will make you. When he makes you, then he sends you. Now, let me tell you this. We are not in a minister's conference, but let me borrow one minute of my time to share respectfully speaking with servants of God. Just because God has called you does not mean he has sent you. Your, <laughs> it is true that he called you, but has he sent you? Because he said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything. So some troubles we face in ministry is because we are genuinely called, but we have not been sent. Empowerment is not when you are called. When you are called, it is mentorship and training. Empowerment is at the point of being sent. There are many people whose call is genuine, but they have not been sent. And so they go and stand before Pharaoh without seeing the God of the burning bush. Pharaoh is a wizard. He's not afraid of the realm of the spirit. You will not tell him, let my people go and he lets you go. No. Let's get back to our teaching. We're understanding Abraham. So Abraham took that step of faith. Now, I don't have time for this, but you would realize the Bible talked about a man called Lot, daddy. It says, and Lot went with him. God didn't call Lot to. The blessing was not upon Lot. But simply because he heard that God has spoken with a man. He said, I don't understand the details. But since you are following him, I will follow you. By the time we get to Genesis 13, when you read from verse 1 to 5, you would not know the difference in terms of blessing. Who was called and who followed. Because everything Abraham had, Lot had too. But Lot made a very big mistake. The Bible says there was contention between his men and the men of Abraham. Lot forgot that the blessing was not on him. He was, the Bible says, any man that blesses Abraham, I will bless you. So for following and supporting, he was also blessed. Abraham looked at him and said, we'll be brethren. There is no need to fight. Choose anywhere you can see. You choose. If you choose the left, I choose the right. 
Because for me, it is not about location. It's what is on me. So you choose anywhere. What is on me can turn even the wilderness into a fruitful vine. And a fruitful vine into a forest. But you choose. And he made a mistake. The Bible says, and Lord separated himself. The first decision Lot made outside of the influence of a blessed man brought him to go and settle near Sodom. It's in your Bible. Lot settled near Sodom. He was not inside Sodom. By the time Abraham would come to rescue him, where was he? In the middle of Sodom. When Satan wants to destroy you, he will put you near where the trouble is. You don't have to enter. Just be near he knows the power of sight. It will keep leading you from one level. The, the Bible not says as we behold, we are changed. Something must have happened to Lot that took him in the middle of Sodom. Even though he was still a righteous man, he was not safe. Are we together now? Genesis chapter 17, please. And verse 6. All of these blessings began to come. Genesis 17, verse 6. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Uh -huh. And I will make nations of thee. And I will make nations and of thee. And things shall come out of thee. Someone shout amen for yourself. And kings shall come out of thee. Now the final test that will qualify Abraham into this sworn or commanded blessing is found in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1. Next time you say Abraham's blessings are yours, make sure Abraham's obedience is also yours. Because the Bible says if you are children of Abraham, then you will do the works of Abraham. Now, respectfully speaking, the body of Christ, where we mock ourselves is we are, we are very quick to cherry pick blessings in the Bible and claim them and believe it will work and yet not find out the instructions connected to the blessings. I will show you how he became the father of nations. 22 verse 1. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. After this thing. After this thing. That God did tempt Abraham. God did tempt Abraham. And said unto him, uh -huh. Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. Abraham. After leaving my father's house, after leaving my mother's house, after leaving everything that would have defined my future, the basis for my security, have you noticed that every time God meets you, he finds out what is strong in your life that can make you trivialize him. He will demand it until you stand in a position where only God becomes your completion. You are not walking by faith. This may not be a comfortable sermon, I apologize. But I tell you sincerely, if you want to walk in the sworn blessing of God, you have to understand the dynamics of complete obedience. Read on, sir. And he said, take now thy son. Ah, thy hold own. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I understand take now thy estate. I can easily give it. I understand release Ishmael to go. But he said, take now thy son. And before Abraham would give any excuse, he said, your only son I know. Whom thou lovest. It's easy to give what is in your house. But real obedience is when you give what you love. Whom thou, you are emotionally connected to him. He represents your future. He said, take him. And then get thee into the land of Moria. Is that in your Bible? And offer him there for a bond offering upon the mountains, which I will tell you of. What kind of God are you, oh God? What are you doing to my life? Is this what it means to be blessed? So that the next time you see God, honor the word of our father when he speaks. Know that every altar that carries fire is also an altar that blood is dripping upon. Let me repeat. That every altar that really carries fire, when you check well, you will see that there is blood upon that altar. Because without that sacrifice, the fire can never come. 
you want to speak and what you say comes to pass is more than just reading the Bible, believe me. There is a non-negotiable platform of complete obedience even unto death. That was Jesus' kind of obedience. Paul was mentoring the church in Philippi and he described, he said, let this mind be in you. He was obedient unto death. Let's see what happened to Abraham. We're finding somewhere now and we'll pray. Genesis 22. And Abraham rose ah, yeah, 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 yeah. In the early in the morning. Please don't rush this scripture. I don't know how you read your Bible, but when I read, I read the Bible with my spirit, with intelligence. The Bible says Abraham rose up early. Rose up early is important. Because delayed obedience is a measure of disobedience. There is timing to obedience. Every time is not convenient. He said he rose up early. Do you know what it must have meant for Abraham? Sleeping and rolling from one side to the other of his bed. And saying, so Isaac. I'm sure Isaac would be the first to greet him in the morning. Daddy, good morning. And he says, son, I'm going to go somewhere with you today. And he held Isaac and began to go. Let me show you what it takes to be blessed. It's more than lifting of hands. Uh -uh. Let me tell you what it takes for God to kill a nation to preserve you. You want to end that stature in the spirit? It is obedience as unto death. Do you know what it meant? Abraham will be saying, what do I tell Sarah when I come back? Imagine that Abraham was in our social media world today where truth and intelligence is so relative. That man's ministry would have died. He, everything, maybe his marriage would have died. But he looked at Isaac and he said, Isaac, let's go. And for every step he took with his heart bleeding, with his eye bleeding, with his destiny looking and saying, so I don't have a future again. But he said, Lord, if this is proof that I love you, before Isaac came, you were there and not even Isaac would take your place. Can I tell you this? You will always get to this point in your walk with God where everything that represents the epicenter of your self-worth will be tested except it is not the God of the Bible I know that our world today does not like hearing this but let me tell you sincerely ask any man including our father listen to the story of every giant you see whether in ministry in leadership in kingdom business there must be a punchline in their story where they had to die with everything because resurrection is useless until there is death Are we together? He took Isaac. When he got to the base of the mountain, I'm rushing for time. He looked at all the servants and he said, Gentlemen, I have come thus far with you. My apologies, you may not go. There are people who are too kind to let you obey God. There are people who love you too much. They are too emotionally connected to you. They will not allow you fast like God said to fast. Not because they are bad. They are too compassionate. And sometimes you need to lay good people off to climb that mountain. It is not only evil people you need to lay off. There are times that you can tell good people, I love you. But I see that you love me too much to allow me to become what God has destined for me. You will also wait. And he carried Isaac. And when he took Isaac upon the mount, I could imagine him tying Isaac down. Isaac said, Father, I see the wood. I see the fire. Where is the sacrifice? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. Hmm. That is the journey of faith. And when he held that boy, fathers, imagine holding your son 
And the boy will say, Daddy, what did I do? Even if I offended you, please, can you give me room to explain? And he says, son, this is not about you. It's about my love for one who existed before your arrival. Not even you will take his place in my life. I can imagine God watching what Jesus would be doing. I could imagine God watching what would happen to him as the father. Abraham would have changed his mind, but he still held him. I could imagine Isaac crying and saying, Father, please give me a chance to leave. Give me a chance to leave. At least let me see my mother once before I die. And Abraham kept him. Romans chapter 4 gives us the contemplations in Abraham's heart. That Abraham already planned to kill Isaac and beg God to bring him back. Because how would he go back and meet Sarah? And say, my dear wife, just to announce to you that our son is dead and the murderer is me. Do you live with that kind of person? The Bible says when Abraham lifted the knife, about to kill the son, there was a call from heaven. Abraham, stop. Now I know. Not when you left your house. Not when you were at the base of the mountain. Now I know that you fear me and I swear by my name. Now that is the commanded blessing. I swear by my name that in blessing, I will bless you. I swear by my name. I swear by my name. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Like your seed will be as the stars of heaven, he says. And he said, your seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And he said, turn, you will see a ram that had been caught. I provided it. You sacrifice it. So today, we say Abraham's blessings are mine. You are right, but you are wrong. You are right prophetically but you are wrong in experience because until you are able to obey the way Abraham obeyed unto death there are many people today if God places a demand on your finances you will curse and bind and cast and say that cannot be God there are some of you today God cannot say close that ministry mm -mm. you love God but you love the ministry more than him for a few of you who may have listened to me, you've heard me say there is nothing in my life today and that day I stand by the God of heaven whom I serve with my spirit. There is nothing in my life today I cannot give God. Many years ago, the Lord told me something. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Most times we admire people that we see God doing mighty things with. And we think they were just lucky. And that all that made their life was just an impartation. No, sir. There are wells you must dig through obedience. Is someone hearing? Tonight we are gathered in this place. Because of a man's obedience. I know you are celebrating daddy today because God has honored him globally. My question is, what if he failed obeying God? Every successful person you see, remember that they had the power to also fail. They were willing to fail if it was God there. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I've had the honor and the privilege of talking to and talking with very, very wealthy and successful people in business, ministers of the gospel, and great people who are doing much for the kingdom. And I can tell you, every one of them would tell you, behind the exploits, 
behind all that people see is a part that people never see a dedicated life of obedience if it be thou bid me come and he said come and peter got up i could imagine thomas and the rest saying i think you're a fool you've been a fisherman for a long time now you want to die cheaply and he said no if it's jesus oh god you are my god and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow. I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. For step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days let me tell you this the secret to the exploits of great men walking in fearful dimensions of the blessings and the investment of God is not so much about their intelligence I will tell you it's not so much about some kind of connection they were foolish enough to die with God than to live to themselves. Lord, if I'm called a failure, let it be that I'm a failure with Jesus. That I'd rather be a failure with Jesus than to be called a success outside of him. Hallelujah. Are we together? The first miracle recorded according to the synoptic account of John was in John chapter 2, the wedding in Cana. And the Bible says that a feast was held in honor of a couple. And then the Bible says the wine finished. And when the wine finished, shame and embarrassment was imminent in that program. And then the Bible says a, a few disciples came and they met Jesus. And Mary spoke to them and said, whatever he says to do, this is my prophetic word for someone. You have been recycling pain in your life because you have refused to do everything he said. Selective obedience is still disobedience. Did you hear what I said? Selective obedience or convenient obedience is disobedience. Let me give you two stories about this man standing before you. There was a time in my life where the Lord gave me an instruction, Daddy, I emptied everything. Everything I had. Not just money, oh, clothes. I didn't have much. I put everything in a bag. I was in Port Harcourt. I prayed in tongues for three hours on it. It's easy to give Ishmael, but you know it is Isaac. Because for days you will not be able to sleep. You will be asking, oh God, Isaac is gone, but just verify. Let me be sure that it was you that said I should give him. I carried my bag and I dragged it to church. There was an overflow and I sat down outside. When people were sowing and giving and doing everything, God now decided to embarrass me and I sat quietly until everybody was done giving. Then the Lord said, now you can go. I was dragging my bag. God is my witness to the front of the altar. People were looking at me. The bag was not something that if I gave you, you even collect. That was not a gift. That was a sacrifice. I dragged it when I got to the altar. As I dropped it there, something died in me. I went out and I sat down. And I remember the Lord speaking to me. And said, my son, from today, you have entered wealth. It was the voice of God to me. By the next day, I remember, if I recall, 6, 10 in the morning, someone would call me and say, is this so, 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 and so. I thought, is this scammers and fraudsters? I said, no, no, please don't call me. And he said, God gave me an instruction. Send me your account number. Who are you? Why should I send my account number? What is there? 
You want to finish what is left? There, there was nothing here. And this man sent me something that at that time, if you receive that, it, 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 you will know that God is good to you. And one level of blessing after another. This same instruction came even in the ministry. When we started, God gave that instruction. I'm not necessarily talking about money. I'm talking of obedience to the latter. Hallelujah. Many of us here seated are yet to truly walk in the reality of obedience. A life that is totally sold out that if God says it and you verify that it is him, I'm on my way going and nothing will end and stop that journey. Let me read one more scripture before we begin to pray. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We are reading the first 13 verses. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy 8 verse 1. 28. 28. Did I say 8? My apologies. 28 verse 1. Deuteronomy 28, 28 verse and verse 1. 1. And it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the, thy Lord thy God. Are you seeing the condition now? If thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord, uh -huh, to observe, to observe, and to do all and his to do How many? Oh. All his commandments, which yeah. I command you this day. What are the blessings? That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2. And, and all, all these blessings. Uh huh. Go ahead. This will come on thee and overtake thee. And overtake you. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the if Lord. If thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord. What are the blessings? Number one. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the city. And blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall thou be fruit of thy body. Blessed shall be the fruit of and your the body. Fruit of thy ground. The fruit of your ground. And the fruit of thy cattle. The fruit of your cattle. And the increase of thy kind. The increase of your kind. And the flocks of thy sheep. The flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall thou be basket and thy store. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall that be when that comes in. Uh huh. And blessed shall that be when that goes out. There are people that are only blessed when they come in. There are people that are only blessed when they go out. But he said, Blessed shall you be whether you are coming in or going out. He says, The Lord shall cause thy enemies ah, that rise up against thee to be smitten, not in your absence before your face he said they shall come out against thee one way and shall flee before thee seven ways so don't blame those who you gossip about them in the secret and the punishment starts right there as you are gossiping and they don't even know there is something on them that supervises compliance to the blessing are we together the Lord shall command the blessing. This is it. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thy storehouses. Can I be honest with you? The blessing of God is more than money and resources. But it is impossible to carry the blessing. And then the area of resources will not tell. It is the most focal expression of the blessing of the Lord upon a man. I'm going to say something that will trouble you. Forgive me. If you have been in Christ and you have been in the kingdom for at least five to six years, diligently sitting under any kind of structured apostolic and prophetic mentorship structure and learning the ways of God and among the many things that answers in your life, your finances does not begin to have a testament. Something is wrong with your obedience believe me when I tell you you may not have everything as yet but when you plant the crop does not grow in one day but it also does not take one year to start coming out 
It may not become a tree, but we need to begin to see evidence that it was truly planted. The Bible says, they that be planted in the house of God, that they will flourish in the courts of our God. It even says in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. I read that scripture and it's another way of describing our father. That in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. There are people who are 40 and you will mistaken them for 60. Do you know why? It's not just a demonic attack. Their life has been a plethora of the consequences of living in disobedience. In disobedience, anything will fight you, including what was sent to bless you. In disobedience, anything will fight you, including what was sent to bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's read to 13 and we're done. The Lord, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that uh, rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Uh -huh. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou set thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Verse Lord, 9. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. Uh -huh. And he has sworn, as, as he has sworn, sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments Now that's of the, the condition again. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. As he has sworn or commanded. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord. And walk in his ways. Verse 10. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And, and they, they shall be, be afraid, afraid of, of thee. thee. What a blessed man. Did the Bible not, did we not see this in the life of Isaac? That he began to prosper and continued prospering. And prospered until the point that the Philistines envied him. 11. We are reading to 13. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. He shall make you plenteous in goods. And in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. Uh -huh. The heaven to give thee rain unto thy land in his season. And to bless all the works of thy hand. As a result of this blessing, thou shalt lend to many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. The last verse. And the Lord shall make thee the head ah. and not the tail. There it is. And thou shalt be above only. Say only. only. Somebody shall say only. Only. Above only. Above no only. possibility of going down. Thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If. 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 Thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I commanded this day to observe and to do them. When the young boy Joshua was about to take over from God in Joshua, uh, from Moses in Joshua chapter 1, the Lord came to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. And he began to admonish him to be courageous. When we get to verse 8, he says, This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth that thou shalt meditate therein is that true day and night that thou mayest observe to do not some all that is written therein it says then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have good success Take it down for me. I feel like singing a song. When we walk with the Lord In the light of His word What a glory He sheds on our way While we do His good will he abides with us still 
and with all who will trust and obey listen carefully trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus every area where you do not see the power of God in your life is the area where your disobedience has restrained him every area where you do not see the manifest goodness of God in your life you can easily know the areas of disobedience in your life by looking at the manifestation of the blessing in your life if you find out that the hand of God is strong upon your spiritual life rich prayer life rich word study life there is obedience answering there obedience foreruns the manifestation of the blessing if you find out that you are suffering in your finances in spite of the tongues you are praying i tell you sincerely check well obedience is authorizing pain somewhere before you see the glory of god you must know his ways and then you must walk in his ways are we together now in exodus chapter 33 when you read from verse 15 moses prayed and he said 33 i hope i got that right and he said show me was it 13 now or 18 i don't know which one that you show me your ways and then i think that should be 13 or so show me your ways and then when you get to verse 18 he now says to show me your glory i beseech you verse 13 33 13 the first thing he requested was show me your ways let me know your ways then verse 18 he now said show me your glory hallelujah leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 leviticus 9 verse 6 we're about to pray everybody please read are you ready one to read and moses said this is the thing which the lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the lord shall appear the glory of the lord does not just come because you need it no it will come at the instance there will always be something for you to do if it is water you want to be turned to wine he says go and fill six vessels You want a great catch? Obey him and cut your net to the right side. Daniel, you want to see the mighty hand of God? Then refuse and defy the king's command as proof that you honor the Lord, even if you will be put in the lion's den. Listen to me. There are many families here under the sound of my voice, respectfully speaking. The reason why there's consistent conflict between husband and wife is because someone is not obeying scripture when the man does not obey scripture to be abba husband father and priest there will be trouble in that marriage when the woman does not obey god to be wife mother and priest there will be some there will be problem in that home now yesterday i took out on the men a bit even though it's a men conference but let me balance it also and respectfully talk to my mothers, my aunties, my sisters. Because we need to be careful with some of these trends we embrace, globally speaking. I'm not a sadist, but let me tell you, I need to balance it. The house of God is the ground and the pillar of truth. There is a lot that we are shipping as far as the context of family is concerned. Whether you like it or not, the man is the head of the home period i apologize but this is the truth please help if there's anyone under the anointing there just help them we're about to pray listen dear women the men are not those above them they take care of those below them but they will always fight those who claim equality with them 
So there is a position that when a woman takes, I, I, because I, I know that I have, I have lovingly spoken to the men yesterday. We need to challenge ourselves. But I also need to balance it because there are sincere men who are bleeding quietly. We live in a world today where anything that happens once it is male and female, the man is at fault. It's easy to, rem to remember Women's Day, but Men's Day we even forget. The world sees men as a nuisance to civilization. But ask God why he's a man. The God of heaven decided to take on that position of a man. It's very important. Let me tell you this. I charge every woman in word of life. Take this as an admonishment from a heart that loves you sincerely. Treat your husband with honor. Treat your husband with respect. Throw away any pride. Don't allow society to interpret virtue as weakness. Our world today calls a virtuous woman a weak one. Treat him with honor and you will see things about that man you have never seen. Are we together? Men, we have charged ourselves under God. Don't come and beat anybody's daughter humiliate anybody's daughter make her life miserable because of marriage no it's unscriptural no it's unscriptural it's unscriptural the bible never said to love a woman the way you want he said as christ loved the church if you understand that scripture you should be afraid because no man can love a woman as christ loved the church that means you immediately understand that marriage is not between two people marriage is between two physical people but marriage is between three entities the Lord being the first, not the third. If your marriage is between you and your wife alone, you are in trouble, especially in this end time. Quickly submit to the first authority. Your authority is only valid as a man to the degree to which you submit to the authority of Christ. But women, let's learn a lesson from Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. Every time Satan wants to attack Adam, he comes to his eve. Satan wanting to attack the second Adam, who is Christ, is now attacking his Eve, who is the church. When Satan wants to destroy the family, he looks for the Eve. Because it was Eve that was deceived. Man was not deceived. Men don't fall because of deception. They fall because of love. It's in your Bible. This is not a wise saying. Your, listen, the first Adam fell. The Bible says he took of the tree. She took of the tree and gave her husband who was there with her. It's in your Bible. The same way the second Adam, Jesus, he was not deceived. He came willingly to join his Eve. That means every woman in any home, be careful because you are the first point of attack. When the devil wants to destroy your home. Hallelujah. Now, I don't claim to know everything about ministering and deliverance. But anybody who has been in the ministry of healing and deliverance, you can tell that out of 10 people in need of deliverance, about 7 or 8 may most likely be women. Let me tell you why. It's not because they are bad. Do you know that strangely speaking, the Holy Spirit names himself too after a woman. They are both called helpers. That means woman, if you want to understand your ministry, study the Holy Spirit. He is called helper. Hallelujah. Let's trust God for grace that our homes will reflect the character of Christ. And change some of these negative statistics. And let me tell you this. Men, I stand and I beseech you by the message of God. It's time to exalt the word of God above and beyond culture. Above and beyond ego. Above and beyond intellectualism. 
we must submit to the word of God as final authority even over our homes. If you are wrong, say sorry. Don't just buy gifts. Say sorry. It's as simple as that. Women, do not be so educated or so wealthy or so proud that your knee becomes too far from touching the ground. It does not remove anything from you. The nobility of a woman is in her submission, not her argument, not her explanation. The same way the church is at its best to the degree to which we submit to Jesus. Let me speak especially to younger women, respectfully speaking. Beware of what you are learning online and around. Let me repeat it. Beware of what you are learning. I love you sincerely, but be careful. By the grace of God, this is a house that will communicate balanced truth, the whole counsel of God. Let's not just ship nonsense and be destroying our homes. Are we together? Forgive me, oh. Forgive me. Let me ask you for forgiveness now. Hallelujah. Since I have spoken about the man and the woman, children, listen to me. In the name of Jesus, I beseech you, let me teach you something. When a father fights his son, you lose your honor. But when a son fights his father, you lose your life. You need to understand, there are allocations to this thing. When a father fights his son, you will lose your honor. But when a son fights his father, the Bible says your lamp will be taken away from you and you will be exposed to obscure darkness. We live in a world where rebellion is the definition of manliness. So many young people today find pride just, yes, it is true that some of our parents may not see things exactly the way we are. We have the privilege of westernization and enlightenment, but can I tell you, in the midst of their supposed limitation, there is grace by reason of parenthood. You must honor it. There are many children who would not be in trouble today had they listened to the supposed foolish counsel of parents. They may not go to school, but they have the eyes that can see. There are some things only age can bring. Listen, when mothers, when you breastfeed a child, no matter how healthy you are, that child does not become an adult. He becomes a well-nourished baby. When an adult starves himself and becomes sick, he does not turn into a baby. He only becomes a malnourished elder. So there are some things that are irreversible. A baby is a baby. An elder is an elder. Full stop. Hallelujah. In as much as Samuel would later become the priest and the prophet who would ordain Saul and even the kings. When God called Samuel, he called him through the voice of Eli. He went to Eli and said, Eli, you called me. Because he did not hear a cloud and a thunder. He heard the voice of Eli. Let us be careful. I'm saying this respectfully speaking, especially to young men of God. This campaign of tearing down fathers, insulting people because we think we have more revelation, little power, little exposure, so that our generation will not be cursed because of the pride of blindness. And let me tell you the truth. If there is anyone here and you are part of those insulting fathers, just because Noah's sons saw the father's nakedness does not mean he stopped being anointed. When he got up without being told, he said, who saw my nakedness? And he cursed him. Say, servant of servant shall you be. Can I tell you the truth? There are some things that are ordinances in the heaven, honored by God. This our fathers you see, no, whether you are comfortable with how they are or not, leave it for God. But as far as you are concerned, they deserve our honor in life and even in death. This is the reason why every time I have the privilege of standing before any father of faith, hallelujah, I came here to, to, to bless you 
but I also came here with my heart and with my consciousness when I'm done. Then I will go and receive my own blessing before I go back. I am not stupid. I want to last. So, MOG, before you rubbish and destroy your ministry, learn wisdom. There are some things that multiply with age. Hallelujah. Many of the things we criticize our fathers for, if they ever came to us, we would not stand one tenth their stamina and endurance. Are we together? We are going to pray. I've exhausted my time. Please listen to me. There is only one prayer point we are going to cry unto God for. In fact, let me make it two. The first prayer point tonight is repentance. Genuine repentance. Lord, where have I authorized yokes of darkness and curses and anything through disobedience? I repent. Don't sweep it under the carpet. Please open your mouth in one minute and pray. It's a, it's a prayer of repentance. I have not given to match your blessing upon my life. Cry for repentance. Forgiveness. I have not loved you sincerely. I have enjoyed the blessings of the fathers and yet not accorded honor to them. Everything that has made for disobedience, please call upon the God of heaven. Someone is praying. He said, if I cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me when I pray. Having the readiness to judge every disobedience, if and when your obedience is complete, Hallelujah. Listen, we are still praying that first prayer. Wives, if you know you have been dishonoring to your husband sincerely, there is nothing to be ashamed of. The house of God is the threshing floor. I like you, while we are praying, there is no, everybody just hide your pride, except it's not the blessing you want. So wife, you know you have been dishonoring to your husband. You cry before God, Lord, I did it in ignorance. I thought if I submit myself, you would dishonor me. But now I have learned. Husbands, men, perhaps you've treated your wife and your children with dishonor. There is a dimension of the blessing of God, the sworn blessing, that only obedience brings. There might be members or leaders in this church. You have spoken against your leaders in shame. You have spoken against them, saying yes, sir, in the open. But criticizing and tearing them in the secret. It's time to pray and ask for forgiveness. The Bible says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turning from their wicked ways, that I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Lift your voice and begin to pray, everybody. Please pray. Don't look around. Pray, you and Jesus. the spirit we repent from disobedience Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Father, the grace for complete obedience that when you speak, no matter how uncomfortable the instruction is, I obtain grace. The grace for complete obedience. Go ahead and pray for ministry. Whatever he says to do, do it. Lord, we ask for the grace to obey like fools, following you, O oh God, knowing 
that you cannot receive. Oh, we ask that that grace, oh God, let it come upon my life. Let it come upon me. Let it come upon Pray for the grace to obey. In the name of Jesus. Now, I know that my time is up. May I request that you please lend me five more minutes? I want to make, listen carefully. I want to make a very serious altar call right now. I am first a child of God before a man of God. And hear me. This is an assembly and a ministry that is a testament of the mercy of God. The thousands of people represented within this place and those following. Every time we are gathered like this, there has to be somebody who needs Jesus genuinely. There are some of us, you have been around church, you have been around spiritual things, but you have never genuinely made a conscious decision for Jesus. Then there are those who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus with my heart, but for some time, because of the pressures of life, my life has gone haywire. Let me tell you the truth. I don't mean to scare you, but one day, this life is going to be over. Let me tell you sincerely, the Bible very clearly tells us that one day, this life will be rolled like a curtain at the blast of the trumpet. By the announcing of the archangel, we will see his face again. The one we have lived all our lives for. And he says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then that we who are alive and remain, that will be caught up with him in the air. Let me tell you the truth. It is not a parable. One day Jesus is going to return. Our father said this to us as infants and as children. Some of them have joined the cloud of witnesses today. Some of them, like our father, are still alive and remain as testaments of God's warning to us that we do not have an excuse. Can I tell you, I cannot force you to hand over your entire life to Jesus, but I can admonish you by the grace of God. When the spirit of truth is come, the Bible says that he will guide you into all truth. He will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment i am going to count one to five for the sake of organization we'll use just the aisles here and any other place the ushers will direct you you are saying apostle i'm standing in the presence of jesus and i know that i need him this is not some emotional pentecostal thing this is about your eternal destiny as i count one to five whether you are making this decision for the first time or rededicating your life. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain. And come and stand right here. You can choose to ignore it. Out of pride. It says if you reject me before men. I will reject you before my father. My counting begins. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Shepherd of my soul. I give you full control. Wherever you may lead me. Two. Are you coming? I have made a choice. To listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead me. I will go. I see you right where you are. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. I see those who are up the balcony. Those who are watching by way of television, watching by way of internet from across the world, America, Europe, Africa. Here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. The Bible says in that day when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Are we still celebrating them? Apostle, I want to come out, but I'm not sure if I am saved. Join them. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. If you're coming, come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. One more minute and we're done. We'll begin our prayer. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. 
with all my heart with all i am i will seek to honor your command i pledge allegiance to the lamb thank you very much for this bold decision i see you jesus himself is seeing you now please may i request some of you are kneeling some of you are standing some of you are crying it does not matter there's nothing to be ashamed of it's like being called to come and receive an award except that this surpasses every other gift you will ever have and receive may i request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender everyone everyone who is making this decision lift your right hand fire high above your head please say this loud and clear you are not reciting a poem jesus is here say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i willingly receive jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare by the authority of scripture that i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb in jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you no one can come to the son to the father except through the son and lord these ones have come boldly making this declaration the bible declares that as many who will come you will in no wise cast away we thank you for the gift of salvation and the power of the gospel by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven in the name of jesus i call you recipients of the life of god i decree and declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life i commend you to the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word that you be grounded and established in righteousness from tonight you go forward ever and backward never for in jesus name we pray and the whole church said amen. amen okay now please here's an instruction remember we just spoke about obedience may i please request for a minute or two there will be leaders standing in front of you i'm seeing please wave your hands all the leaders i want you to follow all of them whatever direction up okay this way all of you my left which would be your right if you're facing me let's celebrate them as they go a few counselors will have a word with you and then please all of you in concert anyone who sat close to you if they did not pick their bags and their bibles please their neighbors you will be their keepers to help them those up the balcony please follow can i have someone waving his hand so that those up will see god bless you someone is waving his hands word of life is this the best you can do please counsel us less i know there are a number of them but if we could attend to them very quickly so that they come and join us we are going to be doing three things in one right now may i please request if you have the prayer requests and the ushers if you've collated them please can we have them in front very quickly there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus to break every chain break every chain Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Now, a very quick announcement. 
Our father has announced that some of the pastors may need to rush and go and join them. Please, you are a pastor here. Um, if, if the pastors within the house are exhausted, some of the sons of the prophet can also join to make this quick, please, so that we have a few people attend to them very quickly and they come because we're about to pray. Someone's life is about to change right now in the name of Jesus. Now, I have about five minutes or so, but within this time, your life is about to change. And I want you to believe it from the depth of your heart. Are we together now? Yes. I give the chains falling. Hey, I give the chains falling. Now, please stand, everybody. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Shali kaparato satiaba. Embra kato zazige le parato shkati branda galasu siata. Raga daba kato shala brande ge parasu sekek. Shabre de ge debele kato shabranda gato siata. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Hallelujah. Now, please lift your hands. Here's what I want you to do. It, it will be a very fast one. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus, my God. Please hear me. Whether you are an usher or not, I want you to help those who are under the anointing. At that one shout, the Bible says now Jericho was shot. Nothing could go in and nothing could come out. But at that shout, the Bible says the wall collapsed. The shout is not a ritual. It said the shout of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. As you shout that name, the power of God will come on some of you. Please, I want you to help them. If you can bring them out very quickly. Are you ready now? Father, everything that is not of God. That has tied down the life and the destiny of any man, any woman, any pastor, any businessman. The Bible says, wherefore God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, the earth, and under the earth. And that every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Therefore, I declare, at this shout of the name of Jesus, let fire fall from heaven. Are you ready now? At the count of three, please bring those under the anointing now. One, two. Three, shout Jesus. I decree and declare. Chains be broken. Yokes be a patoshkete belakata. Help them, please. Help them. Eaba shalabarato sedekete. Embrakata bakato shaketea. Embrakatos. Bring them out. Ratakatos kateleketa. New season. Fresh fire. Please bring them out very quickly. Hallelujah. Now hear me please. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing people whose hands are tied with chains. Your hand is a symbol of productivity. I want to pray for you. The fire of God will come upon you. Please bring them out. Right now, Father, I declare in the name of Jesus 
everyone under the sound of my voice whose productivity has been tied down at the count of three let that fire fall upon you now one two three take that grace help them please I break that chain now I break a pakatosh keteketa I break that chain now help those please help them at the back there bring them out hallelujah there are people who the doors of your destiny would have been open but by witchcraft and manipulation it had been closed ah in this place we have the key of david by grace he said i i hold the key of david and i can open a door that no man can shut i'm about to pray please you will see people who begin to run now hold them so they don't injure themselves father every destiny help them that has been tied by witchcraft right now at the count of three be released one two three shout jesus be released be released now be released now help that man help that man be released now bring them out bring them out hallelujah now hear me please if you are in business raise your hand something is about to rest on you if you are in business lift your hands Malida hashala so zebra has kadina kaparuziata shalanda skadina apraske bila katoziata listen believe me when i tell you unbelievers know this that it takes more than just selling products to rise there is a spiritual dimension to wealth in spite of the value that you provide and serve in the marketplace the king of tyre is still there tying down the destinies of men say unto god how terrible are thou in your ways it says it is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies submit themselves to you i want to pray there is an anointing that is coming on you for many of you i i do not kid you in one month after this conference what god will do in your life and your business it will be as if you held a charm in the name of jesus get ready now something is coming upon you father everywhere across this auditorium there are men and women who must rise by the commanded blessing therefore i decree and declare shabakata bakata at the count of three are you ready now one two three take that grace now take that grace help them go and excel command authority and dominion in the marketplace command authority and dominion help that lady in the marketplace hallelujah let me stand upon the grace of our father and agree with every servant of the gospel every man and woman of god it's time for every reproach in ministry to go and jabez was more honorable than his brethren not because things changed by default he got to a point in his life where he was tired oh that thou wouldest bless me hallelujah the power of god is coming on a man of god now i just saw it in my vision I don't know if you can bring that person i'm trying to walk with time i just saw fire there's there's somebody you're a man of god you're in ministry the anointing of the spirit is coming on you now 
right now is going to be a new season for you. I'm seeing two women here. I don't know if you are in an intercessory ministry or God is calling you into it, but there is a prophetic grace. I just saw the eye of an eagle. I don't know where these women are. Take that grace now. Women will rise from worry that will hold on to the horns of the altar. You will lead nations in prayer. Strategic prayer that will bring revival upon your territory. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me someone you are into prophetic worship. The anointing of the Spirit is coming upon you right now. Prophetic worship is a, is a, is a, is a marvelous grace. Doors will start opening up for you even in your land to serve the body of Christ with that grace given to you. Whether it's the choir, I don't know where, okay, the worship team, anyone, in the name of Jesus, there's one of you, fire is coming on you now. Please help them. Help that gentleman so they don't injure themselves. I release that grace. I release that grace. I release that grace. In the name of Jesus. New sounds. You will hear them in your dreams. New sounds. You will hear them as you worship. In the name of Jesus. New sounds of the Spirit. Help that lady please. Please help them so they don't injure themselves. Now hear me. Daddy, can, can we open? Can we pour? Okay. Now hear me. Anyone here under the influence of the spirit of delay? How do you know delays at work in your life? When the only thing growing is your age. If the only thing growing in your life is your age and nothing else is growing, you are under a strong influence of the spirit of delay. I want to release you now. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran. People will begin to run now. Help them. Father, let the mantle for speed right now come upon people and end seasons of delay. At the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. My God. Hallelujah. Now hear me please. Hear me. This is the most accurate representation of your requests. Even if we prophesy, we see in part. And we can only say according to the parts that we see. But you wrote this yourself. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 says to be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, it says, let your request be made known unto God. I want you to stretch your hands upon this sacred altar as a point of contact. You don't have to kneel, but I will bow my knee. If you are yet to submit your prayer request, please ushers do that quickly. Hear me. The God that answers by fire is about to descend upon this request. And for some of you, you will receive answers instantly. Go ahead and begin to pray. That these Egyptians I see today, I will see them no more. Word of life, are you praying?
Someone is praying. My life is changing, oh God. Testimonies of your power. Help him. Help that gentleman. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is your house. Your home. We welcome you. Lord, we welcome you. This is your house. Your home. We welcome you today. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. Now I'm about to pray over this. Just what I'm going to do. Listen carefully, please. I'm going to pray over this request and I will double up. I promise praying for the sick, but we do not have the time. So while I'm praying for this, I will just speak over the sick. Now when I do that, I, I, I'm sorry I did not tell him, but to wrap up my session here, I am going to plead with our father. He is going to come as not only the father over this assembly but by reason of age and grace and his work with god i know that for many of you you have been hearing him speak but tonight is different he's coming as touching the office he's going to be making a very strength as from the bowels of his spirit listen that you believe that which has come from his mouth as from God, you will marvel and wonder at what God will do in your life. But as for this request, Genesis 21, from verse 1, this is what will happen over this request. Genesis 21, verse 1. Please very quickly help us, media. And the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah, as he had spoken. Help that woman under the anointing. My God, I'm seeing fire falling. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bow my knees upon this altar and I decree and declare by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic for everyone who has cried, step into your season of laughter. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. Hear me. Every blessing comes from God, but it comes through men to men. Therefore, the Bible says the king sent for Joseph. And they brought him out of his dungeon. Not God. The king. I decree and declare. Everybody who must send for you. In this season. To bring you out of any dungeon. I decree and declare. We compel them to send for you now. Hallelujah. And David said, is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And he called on Ziba, who had 15 sons thereabout, and sent him to Lodeba. And they met a crippled man who could not help himself, called Mephibosheth. And he called Mephibosheth and said, you will dine with me at my table for the rest of your life. I decree and declare, where are your destiny helpers? I stand upon this altar 
over the city of Wari from the north to the south, the east and the west. Every helper of your destiny, I declare they must show up now. They must show up now. They must show up now. Help that woman, please. He said, and I will restore the years. Now listen carefully. Listen. Listen. He said, have you heard of this proverb that in one day a nation is born? He says, but as soon as Zion travails, for some of you, by the normal course of God's timing, you should not be here. Something had kept you down. So even if that, in, that, that, that impedance is taken away, you, you will just experience progress, not restoration. Restoration is being picked on the wings of God and to be placed where you would have been if those constraints were not there. There is a difference between restoration and progress. I declare, anyone here who has been tied down by witchcraft or tied down by any satanic mechanism, in the name of Jesus, by prophecy, I take 10 years and put it in one year for you. 10 years in your one year. One year in your one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and there was war in heaven. That it, there was a mystery in heaven. A woman was pregnant, about to give birth to a man child. And there was a dragon that came and stood in front of her to eat up her future. But then it says that a strange wind carried her to a safe place to give birth. There are many of you, you are, you are like, you are being pregnant, carrying dreams and visions. But just for you to give birth, there are evil beasts waiting to eat your vision i decree and declare as the stars fought for deborah may the elements of nature begin to fight for you may the earth fight for you the wind fight for you the sun fight for you hallelujah Please listen to me. One of the graces that any genuine member, son and daughter of word of life should enjoy cheaply is the grace for longevity. Because this is the grace that is, is evidently in the life of your father. Others can come and beg for it, but for you it's an inheritance by grace God gave you. But whether you know it or not, it's a different thing. Therefore, I stand upon the grace of our Father and I pray anyone here that the spirit of death is eyeing you to see that you will not end this year in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare, O oh, death, where is your sting? And O oh, grave, where is your victory? In the name of Jesus, fulfill your days in full. Fulfill your days in full. Hallelujah. Anyone called barren here, I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, according to the time of life, in the name of Jesus, like the prophet spoke to Hannah, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, return with your miracle. And I pray for anyone who is sick in body here, whether it is blindness, lameness, cancer, any kind of terminal disease, in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, be healed now. Be healed now. I want to pray one personal prayer for you. I don't claim to know everything. There are many things I do not know. But believe me, I know what it means to be helped by God. 
There is a grace for favor. Please hear me. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. I want to speak over someone. The kind of favor that ends emptiness in your life. I stand upon this sacred altar. Receive it now. That every man that has been unable to take care of his family, like the Bible mandates, may favor rest upon you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.